Okay, so let's have a look at the Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Paper 1 for 2022, and this is question 7. So Hannah is doing a training session. During this session, her heart rate, H of X, is measured in beats per minute, where X is the time in minutes uh, from the start of the session, and X is real. For the first eight minutes of her session, Hannah does a number of exercises. As she does these exercises, her heart rate changes. In this time, H of X is given by that function there. Work out Hannah's heart rate four minutes after the session of, has started. So we just got to write down the function. Plus 70, and we've got to work out H of four. So all you got to do really is just put four in there. 4 squared plus 105 times 4 plus 70 and when you work that out you should get 162 beats per minute. Okay so that's the first one. Let's have a look at the second part. Find h prime of x. So all you've got to do is differentiate the function. So our h of x is 2x cubed minus 28.5x squared plus 105x plus 70. So when we differentiate then, we just bring that down to 3 and multiply, so that gives us 6x squared minus 57x plus 105. And that is it, I think. Yep, yeah, that's it for that one. Find h prime 2. So we have h prime x again is equal to 6x squared minus 57x plus 105. We want to put 2 in there, so we want to find the rate of change at 2 minutes. So it's going to be 6 times 2 squared minus 57 times 2 plus 105. So when you work that out, you should get 15. And that's beats per minute. Remember, this is rate of change, so it's beats per minute per minute. So it's beats per minute every minute. This is how fast her heart rate is changing at two minutes, after two minutes. So actually we have to explain that as well. So let me just explain that. So Hannah's heart rate is, now it's increasing because it's a positive, it's plus 15. So it's increasing at a rate of 15 beats per minute per minute at 2 minutes after she started. So this is the rate at which her heart rate is changing, is increasing. It's increasing at 15 beats per minute per minute at the 2 minute mark after she starts. Okay, so you may have different words here, a different version of that, but generally that's that's what you would need to write. Okay, so the graph below shows y is equal to h of x between 0 and 8. x is real, so this are, looks like a cubic type graph here. Well, it is a cubic graph. Um, find the least value and the greatest value of h of x between 0 and 8. Use calculus in your solution. Okay, you may also use information from the graph above which is to scale. Okay, so we've got to use the graph and we've got to use calculus, or we can use the graph and calculus as well. So really when you're looking at this, you know, there are four points you need to look at. We've got to look for the local maximum and the local minimum. We've also got to look at this point here, which looks like it is actually a minimum, and this one here. So it is to scale. So if we look at the maximum, for example, this one here looks like it's going to be the maximum rather than this one. And this one here looks like it's going to be the minimum rather than this one. But for the sake of completeness, I'm going to work out all four. You don't necessarily have to do this in the exam, but I'm going to work out all four points. We've got to work out the y values here. So let's work out the local maximum, local minimum first. So we've got to take our function, which is h of x. Uh, it's 2x cubed minus 28.5x squared plus 105x plus 70 and we've got to work out, I'm just going to do local maximum local minimum first so what I'm going to do is differentiate 
to give us the slope of the tangents. So actually that should be a cube there. 2x cubed. So when I differentiate that I get 6x squared minus 57x plus 105. Now what I'm going to do is take that and let it equal to zero because remember at the local maximum, local minimum, the slopes of the tangents are going to be zero. So I'm going to take 6x squared minus 57x plus 105 and let the slopes be zero. And we just got to solve this. So let's um, maybe just divide by three first, I think. So that'll give me 2x squared minus, uh, let's see, uh, 9. I think it is plus 35 uh, is equal to 0. So we're just going to solve this. I don't think we need to use the quadratic formula here. From what I can see, let's see 2x, and I'm going to do 5 and 7. So 5 is 10, 17 to 7 is 14. Yeah, so we're going to put 5 here and 7 here. I think that should work. We need a plus, so it's going to be minus minus. So that'll give me x here is equal to 5 over 2 or 7. Okay, we have 2.5 and, and 7. Now I know the 2.5 is going to be here and the 7 is going to be here just by looking at the scale here. But just for completeness sake, let me just do the second differential just to confirm that. So if I, we do the second differential, That'll give me, I'm, I'm differentiating this now, remember. That'll give me 12x minus 57. So let's say at um, x, let's do x is equal to 2.5 first. 5 over 2, we'll just stick that in there and see what we get. So that's 12 times 2.5 minus 57. So if I do that, I'll get minus 27 which is less than zero, which is negative in other words. So that means we're looking at a maximum. And if we take x is equal to seven then and do the same thing again. So we put the seven into our second differential. So that's 12 times seven minus 57. We actually get 27 plus 27, which is positive. So that means we're looking at a minimum there. This is our local maximum, local minimum. So there's a, ma a maximum at 2.5 and a minimum at 7. So let me just put those in there. So we have, here we have 2.5. So down here then we've got 2.5. And up here we've got... So what I'm going to do now is look at this value here. This is at 0 and here we've got 8 up here. So what I'm going to do is put all these four values into my original function to work out the relevant um, y values, which is what we need to determine if they're maximums or minimums. We can kind of see from the graph, but let's do it anyway. Um, so let's put in 0, 2.5, 7, and 8 into our original function. So let's, let's do all that. Um, so let's take x is equal to 0 first. So if x is equal to 0, h of x is going to be equal to, remember we're putting it into our original function here. So if we do that, look, this x, this x, this x here, they're all going to be 0, so we're just going to get 70. Okay, so let's look at x is equal to, we'll do the next one up, 2.5. So if we do h of 2.5, we get 185.625. Beats per minute. Now let's do the other two then. So we've got x is equal to 7 is the next one. Let's do that one. So h of 7. So remember all we're doing here is just taking the 7 here and putting it in here, here and here and working out what the y value would be. So if we do that, if we put the 7 in, we get the h of 7 is 94.5. 94.5. So the last one then we have to do out here is x is equal to 8. So if we do that one, do h of h of 8. If we do h of 8, we get 110. So we're going to get 110 here. So these are all our values. So let's have a look. We can see here that 
the minimum was going to be either this one or this one here. So that's these two up here. If I just go back up to the graph, so you can see it's either at zero or seven. So we can see at zero, it's actually going to be 70. At seven, it was 94.5. So our actual minimum, our actual minimum then is going to be 70 beats per minute. Our maximum then Our maximum is going to be the, one of the other two. So the other two were at 2.5 and 8, I think it was, wasn't it? So 2.5 and 8, and you can see here that we knew that 2.5 was going to be bigger, but algebraically then 2.5 is 185.625, 8 is 110, so our maximum then is going to be 100 and 85.625 beats per minute. And I think that's all we had to do with this, this particular question. Uh, use calculus to find, to find the least value and the greatest value between 0 and 8. So that's what we've done. Okay, so let's move on then. How long after the start of the session is Hannah's heart rate decreasing most quickly? So at what point in the graph is her heart rate decreasing most quickly? Well, really, it's going to be here, right at the inflection point here. It is decreasing the most. It's decreasing from here all the way down to here, but it's starting to decrease here. It decreases the most here, and then it's not decreasing quite as much down here. So we really want the, um, the inflection point here. So let's work out our inflection point. Now, in order to work out the inflection point, you need the second differential, which we've done here. It's 12x minus 57. So let me just write that out. 12x minus 67. So h double prime x is going to be, it's going to be 12x minus 57. So that's our inflection point, or that's our, sorry, that's our second differential. So we've got to set that equal to, equal to zero to work it out. So let's see, we have 12x is equal to 57, and that'll finally give me then an x is equal to 57 uh, divided by 12 is equal to 4, 4.75 minutes. So at 4.75 minutes, her heart rate is decreasing fastest. So we're looking at this point here, let's say, and that's 4.75 minutes. Okay, so that's that question done. Let's have a look at the next one. Uh, we have Bruno, Karen, and Martha start a training session at the same time as Hannah. All their heart rates are measured in beats per minute. For the first eight minutes of the session, Bruno's heart rate beat P of X is always 15 beats per minute, uh, more than Hannah's rate. So use this information to write B prime X in terms of H prime X. Okay, so it's really not going to make any difference because um, if you take uh, Hannah's rate of change, if you like, H prime X, Hannah's H prime of X is 6X squared, 6X squared minus 57X. Plus 105. How did we get that? Well, we what we did was differentiated the, the h of x, and really out at the end of our h of x, our h of x here, we had we had a 70 plus 70 out at the end. Now, if we have our function and we add uh, 15 beats per minute, all we're doing is adding 15 to that to give us 85. When you differentiate it, it's still a constant out at the end. When you differentiate a constant, you get zero. So you're still going to get this <clears throat> same function when you differentiate Bruno's function. So uh, the, the constant out at the end will just give us zero. So in other words, Bruno's rate of change is going to be exactly the same as Hannah's rate of change. So that's it. That's it there. Could write out the function as well. You could you could write it out as 6x squared minus 57x plus 105, but I think this is what they're looking for here. 
Okay, so let's look at the next one then. For the first eight minutes of the session, Karen's heart rate is always 10% less than Hannah's heart rate. Use this information to write K prime X in terms of H prime X. So if we take, um, first of all, Hannah's uh, heart rate, so it was um, H of X is equal to 2X cubed minus 28.5X squared uh, plus 105X plus 70. Now Karen's heart rate is 10% less than Hannah's heart rate. So if we were to take 90% of this then, so this would be Karen's heart rate. So we just take 90% of each of these values here. We would get 1.8 x cubed minus 25.65 x squared plus 94.5 x and then 90% of 70 is 63. So if you were to differentiate this um, here you would get 5.4 x squared minus 51.3 x plus 94.5 now remember, we've got to write k prime x in terms of h prime x. And remember, h prime x is what we got when we differentiated Hannah's function. So that was, again, 6x squared minus 57x plus 105. Now if you look at these values, take 6 and 5.4. Well, 5.4 is just 90% of 6. So really what we've got here is um, we've got to write k prime x in terms of h prime x. So our answer then really, our answer is k prime x is just equal to 90% or 0 0.9 times h prime x. And that's it. Or you can write 0 0.9 and then the h prime x 6x squared minus 57x plus 105. Uh, I presume this again is what they're looking for here. Okay, so that's uh, part two. Let's have a look at part g then, which is the next one. Martha does each exercise for a longer time than Hannah. So she does it for 10 minutes. Martha's heart rate m of x is given by h of 0.8x so use h of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 28.5x squared plus 105 plus 70 uh, in the form, uh, to write m of x in the form uh, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Okay, so m of x, we have m of x and that's equal to h of 0 0.8 of x. So what, really what we've got to do is take Hannah's function and stick in 0.8 of x in there. So really that's just going to be, remember it was 2x cubed, so it's going to be 2, 0.8x, then we've got to cube that. Then it was minus 28.5x squared, so it's 0.8x, and we've got to square that. Then it was plus, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was 105, 105x, so we've got to put in 0.8x here. And then we had a plus 70 out at the end here. So you've just got to do all of that. I mean, it's just calculator work. Make sure you cube first here and square first here, of course. What do we get? 1.024, 1.024x cubed, and then minus 18.24x squared, and then 84x plus 84x, and then plus 70, plus 70 out here. Okay. And that's really it. It's in the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, a, b, c, d are real. Uh, that's it. Okay, and that's it for this particular question.